Hello everyone, my name is Jerome Wright, and once again you're joining me on my Jeronification YouTube channel here on YouTube. Um, I have a sculpture, uh, well, a image, a picture of a uh, of a sculpture here, and the work is um, was done um, in 1890 by Jean Leon Jerome. Jean Leon Jerome, okay, and um, he is a sculptor. Um, I guess famous in his time. Um, the reason why I have his um, uh, an image, a copy of his um, his artwork up here, is because I've discovered through my paranormal experience and encounter that Jean Leon Jerome had a higher knowledge that referenced that of how mankind genetically evolutionized here in our world, and <clears throat> it's my position that this information contained therein is um, um, is a reference. Of how man genetically was manipulated, how civilizations were contaminated, and how different genes were created um, based on those that were bridged off of our ape and African ancestor. And these sculptors, these artists, knew the secret to how it all was done in the process. It's a continued maintenance process on how it was done and how we dramatically changed from that likeness of our ape and African ancestor to our later um, um, Caucasian counterparts, which is actually being shown here. Um, artists take their sculptures and show you and put, put it in your face on how it was done. You cannot read this sculpture but I can read it for you and that's what makes this so unique my gift that I have um, in, in, um, in revealing to you the secret to how our world's artists took and, um, and, and, um, and encrypted their artworks with these informations. There are multi-dimensional images that are hidden in the image. All right. I'm going to read to you first what this is saying. I, I guess her name, this one is there. It's, it's Tangia. A uh, Tangia. Hold on. Let me see what this, what this is actually called. Ta Tanagra. This is called Tanagra. The name of this sculpture is named Tanagra. Um, there's also a place in Greece named Tanagra. All right. So, um, so I'm almost pretty sure that with her having this name and the message that is here, I'm almost positive that the message that is here relates to the place Tanagra in, in Greece. Now, I haven't done and did no research on it, okay? But this is a cult-like ritual, a process that involves genetic contamination of mankind being. So, therefore, it calls for genetic sacrifice and, and genetic records. So, almost without even reading up on it or proving it to you, I can show you through here that just in self in this name and what this and what this image here stands for and this artist's knowledge. If there is a mythical story behind that Greece place Tangera that relates to a goddess or a god, then that message relates to what I'm discovering here. That's pretty much what I'm uh, just summing up in a nutshell. Okay? First of all, before I get started, all my discoveries relate to how this likeness evolved from our ape and African ancestor. Um, it's a process that where animals were used and the genetic bridges that subsequently altered man's kind of being. So therefore, if there's if what I'm stating is true, which it is, then why would we have, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you through a, this example of this nude woman sitting on a rock. Let me shut my phone down. Sitting on a rock. Let me shut this down before I don't get no more messages. All right, good enough. All right, sitting on a rock and then holding her hand out. This woman, is this, this message she's telling you here, I'm sitting on this rock nude because 
This is the founding stone of mankind's genes. Through the founding stone of mankind's genes, I've genetically sacrificed my body, and through my body, new genes were created, and now I balance them in my hand. So they're stating. So the artist is telling you captures that from this, through this, came this, a genetic altering. How can this be? How can this be possible? Well, first of all, absorb this. Look at how bizarre this even appears, this whole scenario. Why would an artist be inspired to make such a thing? But let's revisit this time, this era. All of this stuff here, this artwork, artists' sculptures, were oversaw by not just their mentors, to be accepted and through a time and through an era like this and not be beheaded. It had to be approved by by religious leaders who oversaw these eras of, um, of artists and, and, um, and their artworks in their schools. Um, and at a time where there was no nonsense for cult-like interpretations that were represented in, 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 in artwork. And it's not just that, though, but relating to this stuff is all of our famous artworks, like Michelangelo, um, Leonardo da Vinci, Bernini, all of these people, these artists, all have the same type of message behind their artwork. Okay. Let, let me get to the point here that I'm actually making. The founding genetics, which is ape and African ancestry, bridged over by this being, showing you, and then extracted from her now is a new gene. How was this done? Well, to make it such an extraction, you have to first contaminate. If you look into the stone, here, and here, you can see first the silhouette or the image, depending on the resolution, on the way that you look at this. If you enlarge it, it takes away. If you reduce it, it shows. The resolution, the artist puts in the face of that of our ape ancestor, stating that she's bridged over our ape ancestor through a genetic contamination. She didn't just go bridging back in because, you know, from what I'm seeing through these encryptions, our black genes, our African ancestor genes, were a tough gene strand to dominate, to break down, to take away. So what did they do? They contaminated the gene. They weakened it by attacking these genes with that of animals and reptiles. Look here. There's the chin. There's the mouth. There's the cheekbone. There's the nose. There's the nose. There's the eye area. There's an ape right there. So how did they break down these genes? Look over here at the witch-like woman. Her chin, her mouth, her cheekbone, her right cheekbone. Her hold on. Is that a right? Yeah, right cheekbone, left cheekbone, eye, eye area, and eye area, and almost wearing like a queen's crown. You see that witch-like woman? See them there, people? There's the ape. There's the top lip of the ape. There's the mouth of the ape. There's the chin of the ape. There's the eye of the ape. There's the, there's the, what is that? The right eye of the ape. The left eye of the ape. Right there. The king and queens of genes, of genetics. Well, these are multidimensional images. You cannot see them unless you are showing them, unless you have a multidimensional sense of awareness, or unless I show them to you, I highlight them to you. I have this image in the perfect scenario, setting, that, you, that I can reveal these images to you. If you look closely at these images, you will see other multidimensional images. Look at the 
black face right here. This will be the left cheekbone, cheekbone, um, chin, mouth, eye area, right there, attaching the face of the eighth. All of this is in rocks, people. This is in, these are our founding genetics. Genetics in motion, showing you what happened. You see her hand, her, her hand is attaching the rocks. She, I'm breezed over these genes. And through that genetic contamination, that cauldron-like process, this, this is nothing less than a cauldron. An extraction was made. My body sacrificed, I breezed over, and now through my body comes a new gene that was created through this process. And this is what our world's artwork was about. So, what are some of the genes that they're talking about there? Well, I know that the reptilian genes are there, and I'm not going to I'm not going to disclose how I know that the reptilian gene is actually there. I'm not going to disclose that. I'm going to leave that open. But I will tell you this much. Right there where the mother of creation faces, who I dub her as the queen of genes, right there, alongside of the ape's face. You can see that ape's face pretty good there, can't you, right there? Okay. Over here, the number one creature there, and he's in also in here, morphine in here, that they attacked our African and ape genes with to cause for the hair and the eyes of our Caucasian counterparts. Let me see if I can bring that in for you. Is the lion. See those lion's faces? See that half of a lion's face right there? See the lion's nose, cheekbone, eye, mouth, chin, and then right here. Look at it. Now you see the witch-like woman. Hold on. Is there? But check out how when you turn the image. Look at the face. I highlighted these for you people. See the ape? African-like creature right there. See the lion right there. Look at these faces. See the dog-like creature right there. You know what happened? Jeans broken down. And now through her body, new genes are being sent out. Contamination. I don't care who the artist is, as long as they were famous for creating bizarre sculptures like this, and this is throughout all Rome, ancient Greece, throughout all of Egypt, you know the artworks that most of Egypt and Africa, poor Africa, has been, been raped and robbed of all its riches and treasures. Um, so they don't have much of this stuff here left. But throughout the Asian world, um, these sculptures represent a similar story. They show how from each continent, from each civilization, how that civilization furthered themselves further genetically away from their ape and African ancestor. And through which creatures there was a contamination process done. So, if you're furthering yourself away from the continent of Africa genetically, in that sense, that means that each civilization takes turns in a cyclonation process that contaminates the original source from which they evolved. That makes sense? So, the, the, the disease, the plagues, the thing about the AIDS, all of this. Africa has became a target of genetic contamination of these genes. Next in line is Egypt. I'm going to do a video and show you how the and one and one and there's the the most famous of all with Egypt is our is um, Queen Cleopatra and her elopement with that of Ju Romans um, Julius Caesar. These 
information, reference, genetic bridgings and genetic alterings and contaminations of civilizations, and the stories detail it all. My name is Jerome Wright. You're watching my Jeronification channel, and it's my position that sculptures like these can be read because they hold the story to who you genetically are. It's my position that I don't care what it is, whether it's a painting, whether it's artwork, it doesn't make a difference. That through my paranormal sense of being, my paranormal sense of awareness, and my paranormal sense of having my experience, through it all, I can read this, and I can tell us our ancient history. I can fill in all of the gaps that were missing. Thank you. My name is Jerome Wright, and I appreciate you for watching this video.